entered the realm of the gods. So give us your mind and your full attention. So you say you deal with esoteric information? I never heard of such. Well, you're in for a treat.
back once again, your host, Dr. Aline Bay, and you're listening to the hottest, guess you can say, sounds on your radio. First of all, the radio, we are back once again. And before we get going in tonight's discussion, let me bring up my co-host, Brother Fahim L. Hey, I'll tell you what you thought he's. Yeah, hey, I tell you what, Toish, how you doing tonight, brother? Doing very well, very well, brother. I have one question to ask you before you start. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got, I just got to read the English language, uh, the American English language of 1828 Northwestern Dictionary. I couldn't find the word uh, uh, tachatanas in there. You can't find the word what? A tachatana, tachatan, a tachatanas. That's dealing with. Oh, oh, okay, I got you. Um. It might not have been in there. Um, how old is the dictionary? Because it's actually a Greek word. Yeah, it's actually a Greek word. Okay. Mm-hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. find it in the Chambers Dictionary neither. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I, the etymology Dictionary, I couldn't find it in there. So. You talking about okay. oxa, um, um, autotoxin? Yeah. Right. Which, yeah, that's, a, that's a Greek word in which that um, means um, the original inhabitants or indigenous Natural person. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Right. So it's a Greek word, so you would have to look up in the Greco Latin, you know, um terminology. Oh, okay. Mhm. Okay. No, no, but those two, I found it in the in the the, the uh Black Law Dictionary and the Westers. But it took me back to Aboriginal Indigenous though. Right. Exactly. It means the same thing. So I don't yeah, I don't see yeah. what the big what the big thing is what 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 is the big thing you know no Why because it's Greek issue? oh right but Greek of... Greek is um Greek the origin of Greek and Hebrew is the same which is Phoenician okay. and if you're okay. saying that you're a Canaanite then that's Phoenician which is Greek and um Hebrew which is the same language okay you know just different dialects so I mean it's just like Arabic and um and Hebrew. You know, okay. uh, when you look up um, various words um, within each one of them, you know, like for example, um, salam. You know, when someone say assalamu alaikum, right? In Arabic, well, you know, the same greeting is within Hebrew. You say you say shalom alaikum. Right, the same thing. Right, assalamu alaikum is the same as shalom alaikum. Yeah, it's the same thing as Aboriginal Indigenous. It's right. the same it's thing. The so, so right, I mean, right, right. Okay. Right, right. So no doubt about that. Um, hopefully we'll clear that up for um, everyone. Brother L put that to our attention um, right off the bat. All right, <laughs> we got tonight's show in which that is going to probably get pretty deep. It's the metaphysics of muscles and the occult science of the human anatomy. So we're going to get right into it. Let me bring on our guest for tonight. Brother, are you here? Peace, peace. I'm here. Peace. Peace, peace to the God. Peace. Peace, God. Peace. All right. Peace, Brother Eileen. Dr. Eileen. Peace, uh, Brother L. Peace, I also peace, want, to acknowledge your, want to acknowledge your lovely wife, too, Dr. Eileen. I spoke to her on the phone. Um, very uh, gracious, and I uh, just want to extend my thanks to y'all for for even taking the time out to even uh, talk to me. Oh no, shoot, bro! We appreciate you and the knowledge that you get ready to drop on us tonight. Um, is some needed information, brother. Access on on one of our YouTube um comments. Um, about show ideas, and he said, "Brother Eileen, did you ever have you ever done a show on the metaphysics of um of muscles?" And I was like, "Okay, the metaphysics of muscles, all right." So mm-hmm. let's put that out there in the air, and um and shoot, actually, no more than a week and a half, less than two weeks later, you know, um you hit us up. So, I mean, that's just the way that the, um you know nature and the ancestors are working. So, you know, we definitely ready to get Correct. into it. You know, because it's going to be something dealing with the the occult sciences of the human anatomy. And if people don't know uh, that the physical body is 
you know, in the image and after the likeness of God, which is personally, you know, your personal or soul, you know, salvation, which has to, you know, which is personified, you know, within the physical body, you know, part of the physical body, you know, um, then there's some things they're going to find out tonight for sure, I'm sure. So, um, you know, wherever you want to start off at, um, bro, you know, shoot, please get into it. All right, well, let's get it in. I, before I get started, let me let you all know I got a young lion here, my, my little son, <laughs> six months old. So, right. If you hear him right. roaring, then let me apologize now because he, he, he might roar. So uh, okay. y'all bear with me. All right. Um, but I want I want to acknowledge also my lovely wife. Isra, I want to acknowledge my mother. And my mother has just turned 70 three days ago. And oh, she listens in every Saturday because I have a little show comes on that we talk about occult science. And I just got to say kudos to my mother Excellent. at 70 years old to not right. condemn me to hell. You know, because I talk about, you know, I, I you know we go way out there with it. So I want to acknowledge her tonight. Um, I want to acknowledge the listeners who are calling in from the right on, right on. Um, I want to acknowledge the listeners too who are calling in from the Quest and listening in. I want to thank them also for tuning in. Just real brief, and I'm gonna. I know I gotta condense this, but I, you know I want to let the people know who I am, and I'll say this. My Western training, because this is not education, my Western training is in journalism. I got a Bachelor's of Science in Journalism from University of Texas at Arlington. My education is what we would call, what some people would call ghetto scholarship. You can, I'll take that label. So that's what I, that's what I, you know, I'm self-taught. But I'm self-taught through such people as Dr. Arlene Bates. By having to right. drive to listen to brothers like this, I'm self-taught through brothers like Bobby Henry. That when I hear Dr. Eileen Bates right. say, "Go and get um, by Michael Cremo," what's the book? Forbidden uh, Archaeology. Yes, that's how I found out about that book through Dr. Eileen. So, tons of books through Dr. Phil Valentine, through Dr. Bo- uh, through uh, Bobby Henry. So. I acted upon what I heard from these people and I started building my library, which is what everyone should do. You should be scholars. We are scientists. We should not be onlookers. You got to get off the bench and get in the game. So um, uh, I'm a personal trainer by trade, and I'm also um, a researcher. Um, So that's who I am in a nutshell. Um, like you know, I you should know by now I'm a, a husband and a father. And um I wanna say about our presentation tonight, just to temper everybody's expectations that this will not be a workout program. It won't be something to tell you how to get develop bigger biceps or bigger triceps. Just we're gonna like Doctor Eileen said, we're gonna get into the metaphysical and the occult significance of muscle Um, and what we're going to do is reveal greater mysteries through something profane you know we consider just a just a physical act of working out on on the surface is just a profane activity but through the profane we're going to reveal some greater mysteries Um, and that harkens to one of the seven hermetic principles of law of correspondence, as above, so below. The lesser reflects the greater and vice versa. Um, all I try to do is take a common sense approach to explain complicated things. Complicated things should really be able to be understood in a simplistic manner. And um, a lot of the things that we need to find out, we can get by just paying attention to what goes on in our everyday lives. So I got a cousin. I'm from North Carolina, Dr. Eileen. So right. um, before I moved to Texas, 
Right on, right on. You, I'm from the other side of the state. I'm from the west side, but um, <laughs> b- b- before I moved to Texas, I got a cousin named Tony Roof. Now, Tony Roof is a jack leg, man of all trades. Tony Roof, uh, they call him the bundo man because when you take your car to him to get it painted, he's going to fill up all the dents with a bunch of bundo. He's going <laughs> he to uh, sand it down and paint it. Um he he do break jobs, all type of little odd jobs. But me and Tony Roof used to sit on his porch, and, you know, we'd be doing what we do, and people would come by, and somebody might come by and need their they breaks done. Or they might come by and they need, they want to holler at Tony Roof to get a paint job. And he might get $50 here, $30 there, 100 here, and he would look at me. You know, my nickname is Boo. He'd be like, Boo, bow, pay attention. And what he was telling me is, you see how I'm getting down, how I survive. I'm hustling, and I, I, I make sure I figure out a way to make ends meet, is what he was saying. So I like to always introduce that concept of the Tony Roof principle. Pay attention. Pay attention to everything going on around you, and then you'll be able to uncover greater mysteries just by that vehicle. So... Y'all bear with me. I got to lay a little foundation before we jump into this because I, I got to um, – we're going to build up to this thing. and I'm going I'm to be mindful of the time frame that we got, Dr. Eileen. Um, but I want to mention Noah Webster. Noah Webster, and it's funny because Brother L just brought up that question about looking in the word origins. How many people – actually take the time to investigate the origins of words. How many? Not many. And Noah Webster's job when he was sent over here, he's considered to be one of the founding fathers. Noah Webster was one of the first producers of textbooks in America. Noah Webster's job was to come over here and to fashion the language because they were they were savages. The European, the majority of the Europeans that had come over here were prisoners or indentured servants or slaves. His job was to come over here to fashion the language to try to civilize them. But he only his job was to teach them one side of language. So we have something called connotative linguistics and we have denotative linguistics. Connotative, like I said, is just one side. But denotative is what the word actually means. Actually means. That's right. And when we get to denotative, we're talking about etymology. And, and Brother L, I want to tell you about this book, The Origins of English Language. That Octonus, uh, 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 what you were looking for, you'll yeah. find it in here. Okay. Uh, and it says, uh, of the earth. That's what they give for the root of that. But we're talking about, when you get into denotation, you're talking about etymology. Now, but you can't stop there because etymology is still a left brain application. Etymology is going to tell you who the mama is, who's the mama of this word, or who are the mothers of this word. But you can't stop there. You have to go into what's called transitory linguistics. Now, that starts calling on your right brain. Transitory linguistics is basically your ability to use your imagination or like C. Freeman L. would say, your image nation, to be able to connect the dots between mm-hmm. the different mothers that you'll find in other words. So now we see here you have a left brain and a right brain application. Etymology deals with the rational, and the transitory linguistics deals with the creative side, or what's called the bird language. And when you get into the bird language, you find phonetic similarities, shared consonants. And I'm going to tell you another little trick. It's a thing called anagrams. Like you take, they tell you, please, please, please is an anagram for asleep. And all anagram means you take a word and scramble it up to hide its true meaning. Mm. So you're going around here worried about pleasing people. That means you are asleep. And the only way to please people is to be asleep. Hmm. They take the word evil. That's an anagram for live. Right. 
So I'm just laying those things. I'm trying to build something because I want to build a case to why we got to go through this laborious task to get to muscles. Because most of us live in a microwave generation. We want to get right. My grandma would say, y'all in the microwave generation. Wham, bam, thank you, man. We want to get right to it. But we got to be patient. We got to bake this pie from the crust up, okay? That's what we're going to do. And I'm in there. we're going to keep moving with this thing. What we're doing, even in talking about the metaphysics of muscle, we're going to be rebuilding the Tower of Babel. That story in the Bible about the Tower of Babel is not a historical story, but it's a true story. It's a mythology. And the great gift about mythology is that it can teach you something that's true, but hide it inside of a fictional story. There were no men actually out there with some scaffolds trying to build a damn tower up to the sky. Right. That's not what the story is telling you. The story is saying that language has a common origin. And that the people became ignorant of their common origin and they were scattered. And those original mm-hmm. people, you know who they got to be talking about, the melanated mm-hmm. man and woman. Right. So we're going to do our part tonight to work towards rebuilding this tower of Babel as we discuss this topic of the metaphysics of muscle and the occult principles of human anatomy. Let's talk about the occult. The occult is basically that which is hidden. I know if you listen to Dr. Arlene and Brother L, you done heard this a million times. But just for some, in case somebody's listening and ain't never heard it, the occult simply means that which is hidden. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. You live under occult principles every day, whether you realize it or not. Exactly. When you take a bath or a shower, that's occultism. Because you came from the water, so every day if you want your ass to be clean, you got to get back in the water and be covered by the water. When you're covered by the water, that's occultism. You've been covered. You're hidden in the water. Mm -hmm. When you get under the covers every night, that is reminiscent of you getting back into your mother's womb. That's why when you get under the covers, you normally get into the fetal position. You are occulted when you go to bed at night. And you uncover in the morning when the sun comes up. Going to sleep itself is occultism because you travel inward to another universe. So I just want to lay those down. Just to give you a framework. Take the spookism out of when we hear that word occultism, we're thinking, you know, uh, eating chicken feet and cutting off baby heads. Right. But we're talking, it's, it's as simple as talking about, in its pure essence, it's talking about your soul. Your soul, that which is hidden inside of you. So, the occult is also the underworld. And it's the place that we have to recharge. And the occult represents utter, complete darkness, but it takes darkness for light to be produced. The bear goes into the cave to hibernate and rejuvenate. He's occulted. Osiris rules in the underworld, and it's through his establishment of his kingdom in the underworld that Horus, the light, is realized. Again, occult principles. So with all that, I had to do it, bro. You dropping so many bombs in just the last <laughs> ten minutes is ridiculous. I was about to say the damn bomb go off. I was going on. <laughs> I even I oh, even thought somebody farted like hell. <laughs> all right. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> I, I man, you cold I with it. You got sound effects. Off. Sorry. <laughs> Like, man, you got sound effects and everything, man. All right, okay. <laughs> I got I to gotta catch up. Yeah, yeah. Osiris is the underworld. Um, so let's, you know, let's, let's look into this thing when we talk about muscle. Now that we've got a, and I hope I'm not moving too fast, but 
bro, oh, bro, you're doing your thing. Brother. You're doing your thing. Everybody got to be enjoying it. If they not, they exactly. out their goddamn minds. <laughs> you know. So let's look at muscle. Muscle is a cult. So. Being on here with some scholars that can appreciate this, let's get into the etymology of the word muscle. And, uh, you know, um, in in true Eileen Bay, Bobby Hemmett, Phil Valentine fashion, Brother Panic fashion, you know, I want to sources. Uh, and I, wanna, I like to give people credit, man, for why I learn stuff. Ain't none of this, ain't none of this stuff ours. So, you know, we don't need to try to hoard stuff like, you know, like uh, somebody came down off some mountain and gave us some information. Uh, this book, The Origins of English Words, I actually was watching a video of a brother named Abdullah Bey. Oh, yeah. And brother Bozy. Brother right Elf to him all the time. Right on, right on. He recommended this book, The Origins of English Words. Man, I got to tell y'all, if you can see this book, this book, the the cover is all bent back. I done been through probably 10 packs of them page tabs that I get at Walmart. I mean, the pages are all marked up. I got bookmarks. This book is probably my number one treasure in my collection because it ain't nothing like knowing somebody's mama. You know, if you know that word's mama, you know, you got some power in there. You, you know, you, you, you have magic. Right. Um. Another book I want to recommend is called The Origins, a short etymological dictionary of modern English by Eric Partridge. Good complimentary book. They are both basically on par when they break down the etymology of muscle, coming from the root, Indo-European root mus, M-U-S, as in mouse, uh, Sanskrit musk, mouse. Also, that means testicle. Hmm. All right. Starting, okay. to, starting to uncover something. Now, when oh, we wait, go to the Greek, Greek. Mm-hmm. that's right. That's right. And then we go to the Greek rendering, we get must as well as in muscle. Now, that's, we got we to gotta hang our hat on that muscle. Now, muscle is not, let me differentiate. The muscle in your body is M-U-S-C-L-E. The muscle that this Greek rendering is talking about is M-U-S-S-E-L. That's talking about the seafood that sits inside of the shell. Mm-hmm. Right. Now we start shifting gears into the metaphysics because this is where I, what I was telling you, you got to consider two things with language. You got to consider the etymology and then it's transitory nature. Etymology we have, but then you got to use your imagination to look at a muscle, and you got to think, what's a, how does a muscle look? It's a piece of meat that's inside of a shell. Something hidden. <laughs> Something right. occult. And then on the end, you have E-L. Don't E-L mean God singular? Right. God, force, or power. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So we're saying power or God is buried inside of a shell. Mm. So that comes from <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, I like the chain. That concept of the shell <laughs> He's dropping it on his brother. <laughs> I'm just doing what everybody else should shell. be doing, Rock. That's all. Right on. <laughs> right on. Let's go to Isaiah 14 and 15 uh, to deal with this concept of the shell. And it says, uh, well, we'll start at um, 14. 13. Isaiah 14 and 13. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God, and I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Nevertheless, you will be thrust down into Sheol. Now, 
This word is spelled S-H-E-O-L. But if we use transitory linguistics, phonetically, it is very similar to shell. That is the story, and this is supposed to be the story of Lucifer being cast out of heaven. That is the story of our souls falling down into a human body. Exactly. And shell is shell. Take the S off of shell, and that is hell. Yeah. Remove the H off of hell and replace it with a C, and you have a cell. What is used to power the muscle? Cells. Okay. And cells contain what? A cell is a light body. So we're getting, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Drop <laughs> bombs on them. <laughs> like a battery cell, brother. <laughs> oh. Now, there is a correlation between Osiris, who goes to the underworld, now, now y'all stay with me, you All listeners right. out there, <laughs> and Satan, who is cast into the pit or shield. As we know Satan's considered to be synonymous with Lucifer. He's cast into shield. He's hidden. He's a cult. But to go further, we know that Osiris, Satan, Christ are all one and the same. Why? Because we are considered to be the body of Osiris, right? Right. And don't the Christians right. call themselves the body of Christ? Right. Yep. Same concept. When Christ went to the cross, what did the centurion? Didn't they cast lots of his garment? Casting means to tear. They cast lots. Osiris was what? Ripped up into 14 pieces. Ripped into 14 pieces. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, so now in order to restore the body of Osiris, Christ, we have to remember. And you got to stop and you got to really hug on that word remember. And you got to break it down. Member means to unite or be a part of. So if I'm going to remember, that means I'm reassembling something. Now, we also know that the term remember refers to a mental principle. Because in typical language, if I tell you, do you remember me, that means can, can you mentally recall me? So the, the process of restoring Christ or Osiris is remembering, putting something back together physically, also denoting a mental recollection, and it's also predicated on memory. Now, hang your hat right there on memory. Because did you know that every cell in your body is a brain? Every cell. So when you, in, in, in the fitness world, we talk about something called muscle memory. True. Now, that means... For me, I'm 39 years old. I started lifting weights at 13. So I got 26 years of a foundation I've built. So that means there have been gaps in there where I stopped, you know, uh, for whatever reason. It might have been two years, three years. But once I got back going and got serious about it, my body remembered. So just the way your muscles remember, because they have cells that comprise them that are little brains or little universes, each one, that profane act is reflecting something that's going on on a greater level. When we come together like this and we have these conversations, we are remembering because we are. Everything that there is that we got to know, we already know this shit. Excuse me, I don't know. I mean, excuse my language. We already know you. Okay, sometimes you got to drive it home. Right. So, so when we get together like this, we are going through a process of reconstructing something that was already there. So once again, you can see how 
the simple process of things that go on with the muscle overlap into your spiritual life. Now, moving on, I got to touch on this. We recently saw in the Olympics how dominating, melanated people were Mm -hmm. from gymnastics to basketball, track and field, and so on. And I know, I know. We ain't getting hung up on that. I mean, we know right. we got bigger agendas, but you got to at least pay attention. It's spiritual signs are hidden and stuff that you think ain't, ain't even rele- rele- relevant. Let's just take Usain Bolt. Look at his name, Bolt. You think about the god Shango, Bolt of Lightning. And when he runs, that's some godlike. Stuff right there when you watch him run. True. He got a he comes out the blocks terrible. Terrible. They always get out in front of him and he, he walk them down. He's six five and he can move his legs at the same speed as a person who's five eight. Exactly. We're talking about literal gods who are coming back on the earth. There's a girl, big girl who was throwing a shot put. I mean, we're talking, I mean, she down there through the thing at the stadium. So we have physical representations of gods who have these phenomenal mus- uh, musculoskeletal systems, and it's given us a clue as to something that's coming online inside of us spiritually. It's no secret that melanated people genetically as a whole are more muscularly developed than the European. Why? Because once again, in our DNA, we have a faint residue or memory or recollection of being God. Now that might just sound like just some feel-good stuff, but if your muscle has memory, I mean, let's just break this thing down. If I take your skin and magnify it high enough, you will see there is actually no skin there. There's only electrons that are moving around, and by them being coagulated, it it gives the appearance that your skin is there. Your skin ain't even there. It's just slowed down vibration. If I magnify the electron high enough, you'll see that they don't even exist. So the higher the magnification they keep finding that the shit keeps disappearing. So so when we're talking about these people who are going out here and doing these magnificent things, you are literally watching gods move about because them physical bodies you see are not even really there. Sure, indeed. You're talking about high-powered energy that is moving. And you're talking about the most intimidating and the most feared force on the planet. There's a book called Blue Apples by William Henry. I'm going to tell you about William Henry. William Henry be on the History Channel, and he give out a lot of BS on the History Channel. But he got (laughs) some books that's hidden. You get his book, Blue Apples. You get his book, uh, uh, what's that I think it's Cosmic Christ. I got all four of them. These are the ones oh, yeah. you don't even, they hide these. You know about them, Dr. Arlene? Yes. Yes, oh, yeah. Both. Oh, yeah. I know where you're at. You got Blue Apple, Apple. Illuminati. I got information from me, and I need it back. Oracle of oh. the Illuminati. Well, you know, they're they, um. they notorious for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was about Oracle 15 Illuminati. years ago. Yeah, I got, I got about two or three books of his. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. the cloak of the he Illuminati. He got the healing sun, cold. Yeah, cloak of the right. Illuminati. Mm-hmm. I was saying the cloak of the Illuminati yeah. and some other ones there, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, in his mm-hmm. book, The Atomic Christ, he talks about how they um, fashion the atomic bomb based on a black graphite cube. Now, what is, what, what, what's the first thing that rings in your mind when you hear a black cube? Cobblestone. <laughs> exactly. Ain't that what everybody going to hash for right now? To walk mm-hmm. around the cobblestone? Right. Yep. Seven times. And what is that black cube? 
That black cube is what? Melanin. Melanin. And they said they took that black cube and that was their template for designing the atom bomb. So you're mm-hmm. literally talking about the most powerful force on the planet we're walking around carrying. Some amazing shit. Yes. Um, y'all excuse me, I'm getting pumped up. But um Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say this, that in in order to properly build and develop muscle, it is a very meditative process, quiet is kept. I know we see the the people walking around in the stream, tank tops, and, and, you know, the tight pants, and we think, you know, it's just a clown. But to do it the correct way, you have to really become one with the muscle and get in tune with it. So training properly is literally a physical act of remembering or restoring the body of Osiris. Now check out how deep this is. Now we can say that this is just coincidence, but I think not. Osiris's body was cut up into 14 pieces. Okay? There are uh, 14 major muscles in the body Major muscles Now of course we know We got the, the auxiliary And the supporting muscles But we're talking about the major muscle groups The deltoids Which is your shoulders Your pecs Your pecs basically are your chest Your biceps You know what that is Your abs Your obliques Your obliques are those muscles That run on the outside of your abs That's five your adductors, that's the muscles on the inside of your thighs. That's six. Your abductors, that's basically your outside of your hips. Your quadriceps, that's the front part of your thigh. Your calves, self-explanatory. Your hamstrings, the back of your thigh. The glutes, that's your butt. Your lats, that's the, basically what they call your wings, those muscles that sit up under your armpit. Your trapezius, that's the upside-down triangle in the middle of your back which is the spear of destiny, which is a whole mm. other topic. Mm. Then right. your triceps make number 14. That is the body of Osiris. You add 14 together, what do you get? Four and one is five. A lot, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, five. Right. Okay, right. right. So right. when you hear the term bodybuilder, it takes on a whole new meaning takes on a whole new meaning. You are reflecting a spiritual rebuilding of the body of Osiris. (laughs) (laughs) If if they're not learning something tonight, (laughs) <laughs> uh, we gotta give it to you, brother. Yeah, yeah, you going in on them, bro. You going in on them tonight. That's what I'm talking about. Continue <laughs> on. So, um, let's talk about activation. And let's let's try to let's try to uh, we're gonna try to bounce back and forth from the physical science to the metaphysical here. To activate the muscle you need now check this out. To activate the muscle you need a ritual. Now if you go to the origin of English words, ritual comes from the European root A R one. And a ritual simply means to arrange or to fit. To arrange or to fit. So each repetition that you do, each set that you perform, each workout is a ritual because you are arranging your reality. So people who go around thinking that rituals don't occur and rituals don't rule your life, you are hopelessly lost. Everything's about ritual. Everything's about arrangement. You got to take the spookism out the word of ritual. 
and then break it down to its, its root. Arrangement. Now, see, that's a more uh, palpable word right there. Arrangement. Everything got to be arranged in a certain manner. Each workout is an expenditure of energy, which, again, we go back to the hermetic principles. This time we're going to pull out rhythm because when we talk about rhythm, we say for every tick, there's a talk. Every one, there's a two. Okay? That's rhythm. Well, every time you expend some energy, you are then setting up your vessel to receive some energy. It's a give and take. You have to go to the gym and you have to put yourself through arduous tasks where you feel like you're completely exhausted so that the next day and the days that follow, you now have energy that is at your ready disposal. So you can take that principle, now let's apply that to your finances. A remedy for financial lack, based on that same principle, is to expend more directed and targeted energy. Because ain't money called currency? Mm -hmm. And ain't currency come from the root current? Right. Don't current denote energy? Exactly. To get energy, you have to expend energy. All in that little simple thing of working out. You got all these little principles and nuggets that we can pull out of this thing. Now, I want to talk about something that I've just been a plague for me, injuries. So I got, I got long arms. I've got a, I got a strong chest, so I could, you know, I could bench press in my day. I could bench press uh, a lot of weight. But... My arms are long, so what that does is that that puts more stress on the joint because a long arm creates a long lever. So when I come down and bring that bar down on my chest, it's just my body's just not built for it. I've torn both of my pecs. I had one surgically Mm. repaired in the 10th grade. I tore one 10 years ago. I said, I ain't getting this. I ain't had no insurance at the time, so, hell, I ain't had no choice. So I got to figure out how to fix it myself. And that's some God shit right there. I'm walking around now with a torn peck. Mm. I'm walking right right now with a torn right deltoid, both on the right side, and still can train. So I'm going to tell you what I learned through my injuries. When you have an injury, a lot of times it represents a muscle imbalance. You know, like I said, I've had multiple injuries because I've had multiple muscle imbalances. Now, what's the message here? What's the point of coming here? I've been talking to my clients. I had a client today this morning. You know, I I do in-home training. So I go to her house. You know, she's telling me about uh, she's in school now. She's a nurse. And they got this whole 2020 program coming down where if nurses don't have their bachelor's degree, then they, then they lose their jobs. You got until 2020. So you used to be able to get you an associate's degree in nursing, and you could be mm. a full-fledged RN. Well, now they've changed it to where you got to have a bachelor's. It's, you know, it's all game oh. right here. Yeah, right. People out of work. So she's scrambling at 49 years old to go back to school and get her bachelor's. Now she tells me today that after that she's thinking about going ahead and pursuing her master's. I said, for what? I said, are you, uh, well, I said, um, she said, so I can be, um, what she say? I can be in a better position for maybe getting another uh, a, a job or position. I said, okay, let's figure something out right here, right now. Tell me, what's the ultimate position you want with this company? I don't know. I told her, I used to work for a company. I took a hiatus from my training business for about 
a year. And I went to work for a company I'm sure y'all are familiar with called Progressive Insurance. Let me tell yeah, you about these that. assholes. <laughs> we come to work one day, and they tell you, congratulations, we're a $20 billion company. Thank you for your efforts. And they give you some little jive-ass plaque and a damn stale cookie. As soon as you come out the meeting, the assholes are tight, and they all up on your back. You're like, hold on. I thought we were just celebrating being a $20 billion company. But no. This European mind says, now that we've set this bar, now I've got to push harder because now I've got to beat these numbers. So it is if that moment has disappeared. That shit don't even exist. And the reason I told her that is because I'm trying to get her to understand the mindset of this Western world we live in where it's never enough. They train us from the moment that we come out the womb to be a consumer. Do you, a consumer is a pig. The word consumption is based on the pig because a pig will take in everything you put in front of it called consumption. Yeah. And they teach you to keep wanting more, wanting more. And she sat there and said, well, I'm comfortable as far as my salary. Oh, what the fuck are you, excuse me, what are you worried about getting some other position for? You already done said you stressed out going to school. But see how they got our minds colonized? Yep. You're stressed out right now. You don't even want to take a vacation because you feel like you can't really vacate. Again, but on the flip side, you say you want to go back to school because you think that that's going to validate you by them giving you a piece of paper. So I got all off on that shit. I don't even know how I even... I don't even know how I even got what even made me go off onto that tangent, but I just felt, you know, it's. I feel like we're walking around. We don't really understand what slavery is. Slavery is self-inflicted. That's what slavery is. Now, if you tell me that you won't pick up no book and read one because you just don't have the time. But now you back in school, and when that damn professor tell you you better read Chapter 5 by next Tuesday, your ass going to read it. That's slavery. That's right, mind control at its best. That is mind control. So what I'm trying to impress to her is that once you're done and you meet the requirements that, the, that they got set for right now, why don't you take – oh, now I know where I was going with this. Why don't you take some time – to get to learn thyself Your income's okay You ain't scrambling Trying to pay the light bill And the house note Why don't you take advantage of it? That's what that story about the ten talents What what you gonna do with yours So I just want That's a public service announcement Or whatever Or just a damn rant I don't, I don't even know Y'all pardon me Um But we look at how do we build muscle. And once again, I want to credit C. Freeman L. with this. And this is some profound stuff. He said, the Bible's broken up into the Old Testament and the New Testament. You build muscle by going from the Old Testa body, mint, mind, to the New Testa body, mint, mind. It's a form of alchemy. And just like the Tower of Babel, we have to tear down the muscle in order for it to be built stronger. When we train our bodies, we are reenacting our fall to earth and to physical bodies and then building ourselves back to Godhood. Now, I want to go... I want to pull out the Bible and the Quran on this one. So let's go to Genesis 1 and Genesis 1 and 6. And it says, Then God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. Now, go to Genesis 3 and 15. I'm going to y'all stay with me. I'm building to something. Genesis 3 and 15, it says, And I will put 
enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Same concept. I'll separate the upper waters from the lower. I'll put enmity between you and the woman. Okay? Now go to the Quran. Now, I know I don't even need to say this, but you can't get locked in to one book. If you listen to Dr. Exactly. Ali, you know he always bounced back from Quran, Bible, Quran. That's what really, two people made me really uh, break down my uh, intimidation of the Quran. My cousin, who was a practicing, well, three people. My uncle who passed, Ashe, uh, Labib Mustafa, okay. and my cousin, Isaiah Rashad, who was a practicing Muslim, but he left, and he, you know, because he, 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 he took the progression. That was a step for him. He progressed to the next step. And Dr. Eileen, I said, you know what? I, I'm going to quit being intimidated by this Quran. And I'm going I'm to get me, I got several Qurans now, you know, right. and I'm going to start getting into this thing. Okay? So let's go to uh, Surah 25 and 55. And it says, and it is he who let forth the two seeds, the one sweet, grateful to taste, and this salt, bitter to the tongue. And he set between them a barrier and a band forbidden. That's very, very similar to Genesis 1 and 6. Mm. And the reason you have to come to the Quran is because the Quran extends that and gives you greater understanding by introducing the concepts of sweet and salt. Now, y'all stay with me. I'm on, I'm on topic. Stay with me. Okay. Go to Surah 35 and 12 now. And it says, not equal are the two seas. This is sweet, grateful to taste, delicious to drink. And that is salt, bitter to the tongue, yet of both you eat. Once again, we're talking about a delineation between salt and sweet. All right. Back to the muscle. In order for you to work a muscle and to build it, let's consider five things. There's that number five again. Blood, oxygen, salt, sugar, and melanin. Blood, oxygen, salt, sugar, melanin. Now, first of all, there's a million things we can say about blood, but I'm going to say this in just the Reader's Digest version. Blood is the interface between spirit and matter. It also is the transporter. That's why blood is utilized in a ritual. The blood is the interface between the physical world and the spiritual world because the blood carries what? The sacred breath. You listen to Dr. Eileen, he talks a lot about sacred prana, Mm -hmm. chi, chi gong. That's talking about the breath or the spirit. The blood is the transporter of the sacred breath. That's why it is so important. Then there's oxygen, which is the physical representation of that sacred breath. Oxygen is the divine breath, spirit, chi, prana, that the blood carries to the muscle. Now, to build on that, the muscle itself breathes. There are two phases to the movement of a muscle. There's the stretching, which is called the eccentric, and there's the contraction, which is called the concentric. So when you, let's say you're doing a a dumbbell chest press. When you lower those dumbbells down to your chest, that is the stretching or or eccentric. In the terms of breathing, that would be the equivalent of inhalation. You want to make your chest big and tall when you bring those dumbbells down. When you push the dumbbells up, you're going to shorten the muscle or contract it. You're going to exhale. Breathe out. So there again, you see, in order to properly train the muscle, there must be a consideration of the sacred breath. 
in everything you do from the mundane to the most spiritual, there must be consideration and manipulation of the breath. Salt. The Quran gave us a big clue. It started talking about salt and sweet. Now, let's start with salt. Salt would be the masculine principle. Didn't the Bible say I would separate you from her? I will put enmity between the two. That's separating the masculine from the feminine. Salt is masculine. And I'm going to tell you why it's masculine. Because salt generates action. The masculine principle acts upon the feminine principle. So salt is key for your nervous system. Salt is the spark. It's the light. So your nervous system needs sodium or salt in order for it to fire. That goes the spark. The fire that it sends through the nervous system goes through to, to the muscle. That spark, that fire that is initiating the nervous system comes from salt. I used to be a competitive bodybuilder. So like before a show, 10 days before the show, you start cutting, you take all your salt, sodium out your, out of your diet. And little did I know at the time, you are really compromising your heart and nervous system function when you have no salt. When you deplete the body of salt, potassium, and magnesium, you're in a pretty dangerous state. And you dehydrated, mm. you're in a dangerous state. All right. So now you even hear you even hear the thing about people saying it's just how you know it. Are we, they always use us to run scams on us about our lack of knowledge. So here we're going to come back to you, and I'm getting off topic, but I'm going to get back on. When we're talking about people with hypertension, and they tell people to control your hypertension, you need to get off salt, that's bullshit. Yep. You need to get off the wrong salt. Yep. The problem is you've been on the wrong salt, processed foods. But you need, well, here's a, they got a thing called telesotherapy, where people can go to salt water, bodies of salt water, and actually be healed. So salt actually has healing principles. The problem is they have given us monkey salt. It ain't no real salt. Mm-hmm. Right, no iodine. And it, it says right on the daggone, it says right on the go. package. Tell them, man. It does it not is. contain the necessary right off, nutrient, iodine. That's right. <laughs> Right. And your and your and your thyroid needs iodine to function. Iodine to function exactly. to produce thyroxine. Exactly. Come on, man. Come oh, on. Yeah. Right on, hit, brother. So that. Oh yeah. That goes salt. Yep. Now, um, let me tell y'all about this salt. I was watching this um, episode of Star Trek one day. The night, the the the, the first generation, nineteen sixty six. They had a show, a show or episode called Man Eater. And this particular one, they were on this planet, and this woman was going around. Basically, she was a leech, and she was a shapeshifter. She could take on the appearance of anything that you that looked good to you. Now, now come on. Now, you already know what they was talking about. Right. And she was going and sucking people's salt out of their system. And I said, now, hold on, hold on. They, I got to look this up. And the spirit told me, go to Strong's Concordance and look up the word salt. Now, look what I found. The Hebrew word for salt is melach. Melach. M-E-L-A-C-H. What are the three letters that melanin start with? M-E-L. Whenever you see the M-E-L prefix, it is denoting something that is dark matter. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, okay. Now let's go further. The Quran also talks about sweet. Now we're gonna take sweet and we'll say sugar, but we know in ancient tongues they didn't talk about no sugar specifically. They're referring. We're gonna have to use honey. Honey, if you talk about the Bible, is what will be the representative of sugar. Okay. Now, sugar or honey would be the feminine principle because it sits in weight or storage in the muscle, 
in the form of glycogen. In your muscles, in your cells, in your muscle cells, the stored energy is called glycogen, and that's feminine. And you know we're on point because if you take a battery, the positive side is the spark to the battery. The negative side is always grounded to the metal frame, meaning it always has access to power. The feminine side is magnetized. It always has access to the power. All it needs is its feminine half to provide a spark to ignite it. The salt is the spark that ignites the stored energy inside of the muscles, which is the glycogen, and glycogen is sugar. The word glyco means sugar, but then you got on the end, you got the word, the, the, the suffix gen, as in generate, as in genesis, and that's a feminine principle. So, biblically, sugar is represented as honey. Go to Strong's Concordance, and when you go to the New Testament, remember we said old body, new body. Go to the new body in Strong's Concordance, and the Greek word for honey is meli. Hmm. So salt is melak, M-E-L, and, sh- and honey is meli, as in the melisines, Melissa. So you got so so now we got to use our creative mind. We got to put our our, our uh, black consciousness or our melanated consciousness thinking caps on and connect the dots. Ain't nobody gonna connect it for you. You got to be able to figure this out. Now mm-hmm. we're gonna say it's just a coincidence that honey comes from male and then salt comes from male, which leads us to the fifth point: melanin. From the roots meloch and meli, we see running in the background the existence of a dark force, a dark energy, melanin. And that melanin would be God. All right. Running in the background of it all is God. And I'll conclude with this. This reminds us that to fully activate the powers of melanin, we must strive for the heroes gamos. Now, we know that we got a big clue in Genesis 3 and 15. It says, I'll put enmity between the man and the woman. So that gives us a clue that we're talking about separation of gender on a spiritual level. Then we find a connection that they're associated with salt and sugar. When Gnosticism, the heroes gamos is the holy marriage. The holy marriage is between Christ and Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene represents the fallen daughter, which is your soul, which is also Lucifer or Satan. And Christ is the redemption of the fallen daughter. Them two together create the heroes gamos the masculine and the feminine. When we go in the gym to exercise our muscles, we are stretching and contracting. That's masculine and feminine. We are pushing, we are pulling. Masculine and feminine. We are flexing, we are extending. Masculine and feminine. We are abducting and adducting. Masculine and feminine. Everything you do, is an expression of your soul desiring to get back to where it was. The heroes, gamos, the most high. We are not supposed to be split. We are not supposed to, to, to settle for a dualistic reality. We are only here to learn in this hell so that we can graduate and get our real diploma and go back to where we came from. All right. I thank y'all for your time. All right, all right, outstanding. Outstanding, brother. So, I don't know if y'all want to. Yeah, well, I, I, I would say that uh, when you were talking about uh, water, 
uh, being energy, uh, being currency, you know, uh, water, yes, uh, like we were, uh, our mother's water broke, so when, when we were born, you know, that's the occult meaning is that when, uh, when you go to church and to be baptized, you've got to be born again because you'll be dipped in water exactly. again. And this exactly. is the occult meaning of the uh, exactly. of that of that ritual, you know. Uh, I was speaking to a sister one time on the bus, and she was she was uh, well she did she didn't deal with any religion anything like that, and she was getting into the occult science, and she was saying, "Well, the hell with the, with, 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 with with the Christ." Uh, uh, she said, what what was the word she used with the all that Christ stuff. I said, whoa, I said, whoa, hold on, sister. Wait a minute, hold on now. Right, right. I said, wait, wait a minute, hold on. I said, Christ, I just dealing with that Christianity. I said, that's, that's what I said, that's where you're looking at it from. I said, you're looking at it from exactly. dealing with the church. You know, mm-hmm. I said, the way the way they teach it. I, I said, we all can, break, can uh, reach uh, to the level of Christ consciousness. You know, exactly. you can, I can. And the, the, exactly. the, you know, the better understanding of that, you know, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with anything dealing with Christianity, but you're dealing exactly. with occult Christianity, uh, uh, Islam, dealing with Sufism. Uh, that, dealing, that, come on now. Yeah, you're dealing with, uh, 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 you know, uh, Buddhism, you know, and you uh, the the Zinda Vestas and the, the you know, even the Bhagavad Gita. Of the Hindu uh, religion it Dealing with all With the Bible The Quran Like you just said A while ago They all Have the same stories You know cause exactly. They all come from The same source You know uh, that's, that's dealing with Occult science That is the occult science Because the occult world Is where we really live in People don't know exactly. it Exactly Exactly They just really uh, Fear of the occult You do what? Mm-hmm. You live in the occult Oh mm-hmm. man, oh that's that's Satanism, that's that's satanic, you know. But they live in the occult world every day. Mhm. Mm-hmm. So the occult world where we all that, really live in. You know that yeah. sister that you're talking about on the bus. Yeah. She is. She represents a phase that that I think a lot of us go through after our initial awakening. Yeah. Because what happened with me is when I first started. Coming into knowledge I ain't want nothing to do with no Bible Or nothing that remotely echoed anything religious That's right. you, 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 have to, you have to mature in your process And you mature by continuing to be hungry and studying And then what you find out is that them books That it ain't You know, I use this analogy You know, if I'm a, I got a lawn care system A lawn care business And I go out and I'm cutting grass recklessly I don't take time to look for the rocks in the yard, tree stumps, and I run over a bunch of tree stumps and rocks, and I blow my 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 engine up and my blade. Before mm-hmm. I say that the lawnmower is terrible, it's worthless, I have to first say maybe the problem was my application. I wasn't using it right. Mm-hmm. And 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 I would offer that to people who in this journey, you know, when you first start coming into this knowledge. You do have a, a a rejection because that's that's a you're going through uh, an initiation. When you get to a higher level, you start figuring out. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute! Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Mm-hmm. You know, I need to come back to these books because now I understand. When I was a child, even the Bible says, when I was a child, I needed milk. Now I'm adult, I need solid food. So. Um, when I was a child, I thought that Nicodemus and Moses and Abraham were real people. Now that I'm awake and aware, I'm supposed to know that the book is the story about Brother El, Brother Eileen. The book is about Brother Jamal. And we're supposed to insert ourselves. And, I mean, this is Bobby Hammond that always said this. He said, you're supposed to insert yourself into the book. And you, the story is about you, mm-hmm. you know. So I mean, it's 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 a it's a growth process, but 
either way, it's always a beautiful thing when people are starting to question things. I told yeah. I told my um I told one of my clients today, I said she asked me, she said, So the same lady that I was talking about earlier, she said, So when do I start reading? I say you will know what to read when you let the child awaken in you. Because every day something crosses your mind that you're curious about and you just throw it into the back, to the back room. Because mm. you figure you ain't got time for that, that ain't important. I say you got to let that little child talk. And when you, I don't care if it's something about, I wonder how they make bubble gum. Because sometimes the spirit leads you through something that you think is stupid, you know, and it will lead you into a doorway into something deeper merely because you was just in the in the mindset of seeking. So, you know, we they, they shut down our ability and our desire to, to, to think and be curious. Right. You know, they tell you you're supposed to go to school, get good grades, go to college, get you a job, find you a church home, vote. <laughs> now, but beyond that, what the hell, is that, is that it? That's it for this. That's what time. I came here for. So. Yeah, they, they, uh, uh, she was saying that, also she was saying that uh, I don't deal with the Bible. I was listening to this man on YouTube, and he said, uh, I don't do all that kind of go through trying to understand what the occult meaning of the Bible. And I told her, I said, once you understand the occult science on a higher level, the Bible will be nothing for you to read or to comprehend. No. No, it, it, ain't, be nothing. it ain't. It ain't nothing hard about it. It, it, wouldn't nothing. Be, it wouldn't be complex. But she, she wasn't hearing it. Brother, uh, she wasn't hearing it. She said, no, I ain't dealing with that Bible. You know, uh, you ain't got to go through all that mess. Go, go uh, trying to figure out uh, what this means and what that means. I said, it wouldn't. I said, sister, you're not listening to me. I said, once you grow and, and, and learn the higher level of spiritual consciousness and the occult science, you, it, it will be nothing for you. It will be nothing complex. For you to understand about the Bible, but she just kept going on and on and on. You know, I said okay, and I just let her go. I'm gonna tell you, man. I done learn when I get that level of resistance, I just stop talking. Right. I might start thinking of a Earth, Wind, and Fire song in my head or something. Just, just. Right. I might just take off and zoom out because, man, I done. These people will beat you over your head, you know, because. Well, <laughs> When somebody said they ain't got to read, they didn't already turn me off. I have right. nothing else it's, to say. It, it shows me a sign of laziness. You know. That's, that's right. You know, I told her, I said, go find. She said, uh, she thought it was a difference between a Maruka and Morocco and American. And I tried to tell her there is mm-hmm. no difference. They all one and the same. Mm-hmm. I said, it's uh-huh. just a play on words. It's a sound shift. Exactly. And I exactly. said, look at, I go uh, go on YouTube and online and get the, uh, read, if you don't have the book, get the book, uh, the Northwest's 1828 edition of the English language. It'll show you right uh-huh. there. And uh, the uh-huh. next week I, I met her. I said, did you check it out? She said, no, I, I didn't check it out. Uh, I, I, I take what you just said. And I said, what did I tell you before? I said, I don't want you to believe me what I said because I said it. I want you to go check it out for yourself. No, yeah. that's all right. Uh, I, I believe what you said. And I said, I said, okay, okay. Like I said, I, I left yeah. it alone about two weeks ago. And I just, I just left it alone, brother. Yeah, because, you know, we got a, um, we got a Messiah complex. You know, we like... Uh, we like how people make us feel when they talk. Most most people, if if you put a hundred people in the room and you talking to them, it might be three or four in there who really really is is listening 
And, and if you give them sources, they, three or four only who are going to actually write down sources with the intention of going back to find them so they can read and study to show thyself approved. The vast majority, that's why I ain't into all them debates and all no. that stuff. I'm not going to debate with nobody about nothing. No. You know, because... It's a waste of time uh, and energy. It's, it's a waste of time, man, because, you know, people are, we are too into entertainment. Entertainment. Entertain me. Make me feel good. Say something that I want to hear, but you, this is, we're supposed to be students. Right. Students. Until the day we die, you know... <sighs> If you ain't trying to be no student, then you need to go and damn uh, join a Jehovah's Witness or something. You know, right. pass out some damn light uh, watchtower shit or something. Right. <laughs> you know. I think we have a um, somebody with a hand up in the chat room. Area code 718. If you'd like to add on, your microphone is open. Peace, power. This is Sister peace. Naja. Peace. Peace, peace. Peace, goddess. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I just wanted to say that was powerful because um, being a sister, I mean, I've always been a very physical sister, uh, athletic. So you were, you were talking music to my ears. I know I'm going to have to go back and listen to this at least four or five times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a lot of times... Um, what happens is, you know, when you are a physical person, and and another thing is, see, I had a, I had a surgery when I was twelve on my spine, and I have um, Harrington rods inside, and so when yeah. I'm online researching, I hear a lot of people sharing their experiences about what a really hard time they're having because uh, as a result of having this particular invasive surgery. And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, I have my bouts with it also. However, a lot of times I'll just listen to my body. My body tells me what I need to do. And one of the things I always say is real simple, move. If you don't use your body you and you don't move that energy around, you find that you get achy and stiff and, You know, you experience a lot of unnecessary physical pain when you don't use your body. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. sometimes you can just look at certain things. Like I I always buy different types of equipment. Um, You know, I have a mini trampoline. I have uh, exercise balls and all this kind of stuff. And a lot of times I just, you know, work with the equipment, you know, whatever my range of motion is, to just move that energy through my body and strengthen those mm-hmm. muscles. And um, it's really not a simple thing, but, I mean, it's not a difficult thing. It's a really simple thing, but people are not, they don't pay attention to what their body's telling them. Your body That's tells right. you what it can you, needs. Can I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you spell that for me? I never heard of that. Harrington Lodge? Uh, Harrington, H-E-R-R-I-N-T-I-N-G, Harrington. It was the name of the person who invented this particular methodology for dealing with scoliosis or curvature of the spine. Harrington Rods, R O D S. R O D S. Harrington oh, Rods. Oh, Rods. So you got some yes. rods that have been. Okay. Right. Harrington Rods. Let me t- God, as I remember, they were pushing that heavy, too, back in the day. They made us all stand in line, and they were all trying to just see about our spine. But it seemed like to me now that I'm older, the Mm -hmm. sisters would have that because it's actually, you know, the extenditure of your butt. You know how our spine Mm. comes out. You know, a melanated woman, her... um, the coxin bone comes out, which lifts mm-hmm. our anus. And then the Caucasian woman, hers mm-hmm. goes in. That's what made it flat until, you know, the soybean and all of that. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I remember they kept on, and they were acting like I had it, you know? Mm. Wow. Wow, God. Yeah, well, you it's, know what? it's a quite a, an invasive surgery. And um, uh, once, you know, after I got older and I really started doing more research on it and just hearing some of the horror stories, uh, that people experience 
having that surgery, you know, I just always say, you know, at, at some point um, maybe it would, you know, be um, possible for me to just help people deal with that type of um, exercising, you, doing certain exercises that can help you alleviate a lot of the pain. But, you know, it's 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 holistic. It's what you eat. It's what you do. You know, even right. at this age, I still go outside. I'll, instead of hopping on a bus, I'll walk from my house to the bus stop or the train station, and it's an hour walk. Um, just little simple things that just keep your body in shape. Right. So, you know, I could really uh, definitely appreciate um, what you were teaching about, you know, muscle building, breathing, um, and just being in tune with your body and building, you know, what it means to be a bodybuilder. Um, and right. a lot of times, too, you know, people are so consumed with this nine-to-five reality um, that they really, you know, feel that they don't have time or they don't make time, but that's really more important than your nine-to-five reality. Exactly. Exactly. You know. let, me, let me ask you something. Uh, before mm-hmm. you go, what, mm-hmm. what do you what do you do now as far as exercise wise? What are your your um, limitations, or what what can you do? Um, I can do just about everything except my range of motion. Like I'll stretch, you know. Of course, um, with the Harrington rods in, there's you know I have to. There's certain limits to how I can stretch. Uh, but for the most part, I'm pretty flexible. You know, I, I, I bike ride. I also um, I weight train, lightweight train, um, stretch. Um, Sister um, Kadira sent me some yoga uh, videos. Right. Um, you know, so I can I can't. You know, I've always been an athletic person. Even after I had the surgery, I played ball. I ran track, um, and I have. <laughs> I have a very, um, like I said, I'm just a very physical person, um, and it, there's there's a stereotype attached to that for women a lot of times <laughs> because I guess we're not supposed to be as physical. I don't know. Um, I just never identified with that, but I'm just a very huh. physical person, and um, I do a lot of walking. Um, I like working out. I try not to overdo it, you know, um, right. but I just make sure that I get physical activity in every day. Let me That's suggest important, something. Goddess. You see a lot of sisters who are elders, like 75 years old, looking like they're 30, and it's yeah. because they have kept the mobility. So you're going to be shining. Exactly. Right. Brother, um, what were you about to say? Well, just a quick suggestion before the sister get off is that, and this may mm-hmm. be something that you're already doing, is that mm-hmm. – um, Anytime you're about to load your any extremity, you're putting mm-hmm. a load to your lower spine because your spine is basically the epicenter. What well, a good mm-hmm. thing to do is you have a, a, a muscular system around it called a transverse abdominus. Mm-hmm. So under your abs, there's a, you're probably familiar with this, there's a, 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 a line of muscle under your abs. Mm-hmm. Those mm-hmm. work in conjunction with your erectors in your mm. back, and they stabilize okay. your spine. Before mm. you do any load-bearing exercise, you need to draw your belly button in and just do a light cough. Mm. And okay. th- that contraction that you get from that cough, make sure mm-hmm. you maintain that every time that you're moving. And basically, it's still is, it basically it comes down to diaphragmic breathing. You want to make sure that your diaphragm is nice and tight okay. and you learn how to breathe with your diaphragm engaged like that. So that's just okay. a, little, a little something. Just to... And, Brother, do you have a website? For my for my training business, I do. It's uh, mm-hmm. gymworksmobile.com. That's uh, like uh, gymworksmobile.com. Okay. And also, the brother has a blog talk radio show too, God. Could you announce all the stuff that you do? Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. Um, I have a show that comes on Saturday, every Saturday at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, it's called The Quest, Journey into Reality. And mm, okay. uh, it's on blog talk. And it's uh, the call-in number is 515 515- 
Okay, you guys have a great evening. You, you too, Goddess. Thank, thank you, you so you much too. for your peace, peace. Okay, peace. Yep, and love. Okay, if you have a comment or a question, please press please 1 press on your telephone, and then we'll bring you in. Um, let me see. Somebody in the chat room said, physicality is a very good thing under constructive circumstances, and both my goddess and I are starting with official martial arts, um, and we started it at very young age. Martial arts is not only physical, but also very mental and spiritual, and my girls really enjoy it. That's beautiful, guys. I I was in karate, too, as a a young girl. Um, We also Uh have somebody with the area code 336. Your mic is on. Peace. Peace. Peace, Scott. Peace. I just want to say what's up to my brother, Jamal. Nice show. I enjoyed everything. It's always real. Peace, almighty. I appreciate you listening in. No doubt, no doubt. Keep kicking the knowledge, y'all. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, Make sure you come on back uh, Saturday. We're going to kick it again. And like you say, um, Dr. Aleem's show comes on every Wednesday. Right, Goddess, at... uh, at 8 Yeah, we do have to come on every Wednesday at 8 Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> also, it will right be uploaded to yeah. YouTube Cypher as well. Okay, Did you well, want to I say anything about, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I'll definitely lock uh, the Wednesday show in, but uh, with Jamal, yeah, I'll definitely be back this Saturday. I, uh, I got busy these past couple of Saturdays. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I know how it is. I know, I, I know you're back in school and Things moving. It's all good. Okay. We 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 gonna chop it up Saturday. Okay, peace, my brother, and good show. Peace. It is a good show. Peace, God. Peace. Um, did you want to say anything about the brother who and his wife and his girls are in martial arts? Are you familiar with that science, God? You talking to me? Mm-hmm. Now, who, who are we talking about that's in martial arts? Um, his name is I Am the Universe, and he's in the chat room. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Can you repeat what I got, I got lost? I didn't know. Okay, can you repeat what they said again? I'm sorry. Yes, I sure will. He said physicality is a very good thing with constructive circumstances. Both myself and my goddess started with um, the official martial arts at very young ages. Martial arts is not only uh-huh. physical, but also is very mental as well as spiritual. My girls also uh-huh. enjoy it as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm envious because, man, <laughs> I wish I <laughs> – I got a brother. My This is a brother of mine. He's actually the one who introduced me into fitness. He he passed in 2012, uh, Gary Robinson, Ashe. But um, okay. he – he was six five, and he was so flexible he could kick you in your forehead. And I, I'm not a mm-hmm. short. I'm, I'm about six three myself, and he could put his foot right at my forehead. So, uh, I've longed to get into martial arts, and actually, I've talked about putting my girls and my son when he gets of age. So it's something that I that uh, I I commend. And I definitely see the the um, importance of it from a physical and a mental standpoint. Because you know, I mean, it, it, it anything that is going to um, highlight discipline is needed and necessary. You know, it's a, we need to have a degree of discipline. So 
I, I applaud their efforts, and, and I take that as inspiration for me to hopefully, you know. And also, Sister Kadir, you and, and, and Dr. Eileen, you know, I, y'all always talk about the Qigong, too. I, I want to I learn that for me and my wife, too. So that's something else, one of my goals for next year is to start learning some Qigong, you know, and that, being able to have a greater understanding of manipulating energy. So... Absolutely, God. You know, it's it um it helps enhance your mobility, um, also as well as um um your your connection with all your bodies. Mental, uh-huh. spiritual, physical. Um, I notice heightened dreams, I notice um heightened perspectives, you know, um and also a calm, you know. Um, and they've even implemented in into um, senior citizen centers, and they have no longer had issues with joint pain. You know, they've been able to move the blockages that they were having as far as, you know, um, heart issues, um, digestive issues, you know. So it's, it's really a beautiful science. It really is. So that's good that you and your wife are going to get into it. Um I remember with um because we grew up in taekwondo, you're right, the flexibility is beautiful. You know, you're right, we can kick all the way to the you know, to somebody's head. You know, it's just something that uh-huh. we focus on, especially in um taekwondo, a lot of kicks, you know, different things like that. So it, it it's a beautiful thing. I'm so glad that you um that you saw the brother on YouTube. He's like, Look, you know, nobody's talking about the metaphysics of muscles. You know, and you came on and you blew it out the water, you yeah. know, and it's, mm-hmm. it's needed, you know. So I know everybody who heard it, and, you know, I know they're going to appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it. And if, and if I if, if I might take the liberty, I want to say something. I'm going to get on my soapbox okay. for just about five seconds. A lot of people, there are a lot of people like me who do not have a large following. And I consider you all to have a significant following. Y'all been in, y'all been doing this for quite some time, and you know you've been out here marching. Sometimes when you approach some of these people from the standpoint of where I am, people can be a lot very standoffish. And I just want to put this out into the ether because people need to know about this. My experience. Okay. We always talk about when people do something bad, we don't always take the time to express when people do something that's pleasing to us. I I left this comment on uh, the page, Mm -hmm. on the YouTube page, Um, brother and sister, they reached back out to me and said, hey, okay, shoot us an email. I didn't think y'all was going to respond, to be honest. That's normally how, you know, it's like they got all these followers. Then, you know, they ain't, they ain't, you know. So responded. I sent an email. The email was cordial. I called, and uh, so Kadir was like, well, hey, we ain't never heard of you, so tell me, you know, what's something you're going to be talking about before we, you know, put you out here with our people and you be on here talking about how to eat rats and choke cats or something. So... <laughs> I talked to her, and uh, she was like, okay, it sounds cool. But, you know, I'm a humble person, and I just appreciate coming from the standpoint I'm at that y'all, I sincerely mean that when I say it, that y'all didn't high side and grandstand on the brother. You know, um, so I just want to extend my thanks for y'all being down to earth, basically in a world where people like to act like celebrities, you know. So kudos to y'all for just keeping it real. Well, God, um, that's beautiful. Wow, I'm over here blushing. Um, But the beautiful thing is we understand that we all in this together, (laughs) you know. We need each other, you know. So, Uh you know, we all have pieces to this puzzle. So I'm grateful that you that you reached out because our people are motivated and stimulated by information, you know. So uh-huh. when you're in a room with a whole bunch of people, you have access to so much knowledge. 
So mm-hmm. we all give each other the ability to add on. It's just I feel like it's a beautiful thing. Our people need to be inspired to work out. A lot of us are blood O type. And O-type people will suffer with high blood pressure, diabetes, um, memory issues, you know, um, shrinkage, you know, everywhere, messing around and getting shorter, you know, your bones shrinking and deteriorating. It's because we're not moving the energy, and blood O-type people have to move. You know, it's like the goddess said, she was very active, you know, and she maintained that. So we... We have longevity when we continue to utilize the body. But when we're sitting down watching TV and sitting at this computer, you know, it, it's detrimental to your health. Yeah. We have to sweat the, these toxins out. We have to. That's and right. you have a greater flexibility and you have a greater range of motion when you have muscles. You're protected. That's your armor. That's, right. That's your inner armor. You know, people are getting into car accidents and they spine whiplashing, you know, and snapping. But if you have muscles, then it will protect your core, you know. So I'm grateful, mm-hmm. God, for your add-on. It's needed. It is. No doubt. Mm-hmm. No it's doubt. It's dealing with uh, muscles, uh, like uh, muscle tissues. Uh, did you ever check out the uh, uh, the Bruce Lee's technique? Uh, I don't know if you go along with that or not. Uh, he used to use. They said he used to use a certain amount of voltage, uh, but in the earlier time days, they thought he was out to lunch. You know, they thought he was some kind of crazy for doing that. Uh-huh. Until a lot of people in the bodybuilding and the science of bodybuilding, what you into, found out different. That no, the reason why he did that was to restore. It helped to restore uh, lost muscle tissue. Especially as you go uh-huh. older, you know, and uh, there are some uh, people into, you know, not only is bodybuilding, uh, the certain martial arts, boxing, or whatever, you know, to restore some of their muscles, you know, as they grow older. And we lose, as we grow older, uh-huh. we lose uh, body mass, I mean, muscle mass and, and, and uh, muscle tissues. So what is, what is your uh-huh. take on that? Well, uh... Everything is permitted in my my scope. I don't I don't uh, discount anything. I can say this when we talk about. Basically, it seems like he had activated a feminine principle, okay, a feminine aspect of his own being, and we all have a feminine and a masculine side. Now, let me give you an example from my experiences. Most of my energy. Uh, injuries have come to the front side of my body. Okay. And let's, the people tend to train what they can see in the mirror harder than they'll train what they can't see. Now, just think about this, what all we've talked about. Most people, mind functions only in the exoteric world, but they, they cannot deal with the esoteric or the occult, that which they no. cannot see. And because I was in that mode. I want to have a big chest, big biceps. I tore my pec and I tore my shoulder. Now, like I said, the left side I had surgically repaired in high school. The right sides I didn't. Let me tell you how I fixed them. I fixed them by going into the feminine principle. So the front side of your body would be the masculine principle because that's that which is on the surface. You can see it. The back side of your body is the the feminine principle. So I tore my chest, so I had to strengthen, and I tore the front part of my shoulder. So what I have to do is I always have to be cognizant of making sure I train my back and the rear deltoid portion of my shoulder very purposely and intently. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because if I don't address them, then I put more stress on the front side and it can't handle it. It can't handle the stress if I don't give it something to have its back. Okay. So I would liken what he said about drawing in. When you talk about drawing in energy, you're talking about a feminine principle. When you're talking about storage, storage is a feminine principle. So I, I just... 
although my experience is not the same, I can see the validity in that, and I wouldn't dismiss it as being, you know, oh, that's just a, okay, a, uh, urban legend, you know. Right. Okay. Yeah, I was uh, also what the sister was just saying about martial arts and the spirit and the mental and uh, the, you know it, it deals with a lot of that and uh, uh, people need to get also to the what, what they call the internal arts. Uh, it's part of the martial arts, but it deals with healing techniques. Mm-hmm. You know how to heal, to heal yourself and to heal others. You know. Uh-huh. And uh, dealing with the inside of, of the self, you know, uh, I know one brother. He was uh, a Wing Chun practitioner. It was years ago, about twenty years ago, and uh, I had messed up my elbow, but he had uh-huh. uh, held my arm and, and told me to raise it as you know as far as I can. As he hold it down, and then I did it, and th- then he. Uh, raise my arm higher. The higher, the, b- the more pressure he put on my arm, the higher I can raise my arm. I mean, I can. It, it brought my arm all the way clockwise, the back where it was mm. before in the front, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. he, he was saying this is a, a part of the martial arts that was called the internal arts, you know. And uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, a lot of people spend uh, far too much time in the martial arts. And to how to uh, be combative, or nothing wrong with uh, uh, the defending yourself in a situation, in a dangerous situation, of, and protecting your family. But he said a lot of people spend too much time on being combative, you know, instead of being on the healing parts of the martial arts. And this is more part deal with uh, more part with the spiritual side as well. You know. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And the physical side, and that, that's what that's the sister was point. talking about. You know, I think that's what she was talking about also, Sister Kadira. Uh, mm-hmm. How do you spell that? Wing Chun. I mean, it's, uh, it's spelled uh, W I N G C H U N. Wing Chun. Okay. Some kind of way we got to find time to start. You know, we do our best, you know, um, of taking time out to try to do things, but that that my constant my constant um challenge is I'm always thinking of a way to figure out a way to cut back more. You know, mm-hmm. 'cause and I figure the simpler I the simpler we can live our lives, the more we can incorporate things like this where people ain't colonizing as much of your time. Yeah. Because, man, it's just, that's intriguing to me, you know, um, and, 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 and it lets you know, too, like down here, I'm in Texas, right? So I'm in, okay. the, I'm in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Man, they built a multi-billion dollar hospital in Dallas. Now, every major city got their major trauma hospital. Dallas, right. our hospital is called Parkland. And they built this multi-billion dollar huge Parkland. And they got this big cancer unit in it. And they got all these, all over Texas, these magnificent cancer units. Mm. So that means people have got to be sick to fill these places up. Right. So part of the plan is either we're going to keep you dumb and you don't know how to heal yourself or we're going to create situations where we keep you so busy to where you may know things, but it's going to be hard for you to find the mental space and the time to apply what you know. Mm Mm-hmm. So I'm in a point in my life for my family where I'm constantly thinking about how can we simplify our lives more and more. We already live simple, but make it more simple to where we can take time to investigate things like Wing Chun and, you know, and the Qigong and the, 
because uh, I feel like that's where it's at. And you know that's where it's I, at. I know a so way that we can. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because you was building. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I, I'm just. Well, God, what I was going to say is I know a way you can do it. If you, like, especially if you include the children, because they love family night, you know, so you can alternate Uh whatever you're going to do family night, and that way everybody can get incorporated into it. Like, okay, family, we're going to do something Uh different. We're going to do some wing chun. And the beautiful thing about technology is, you can click it on YouTube and maybe watch it beforehand or what have you, and then everybody just do it together, you know, and then you can do a session where okay. maybe somebody just comes up with their own thing after they've been motivated, you know, after they can see the signs. Okay, now what 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 um exercise do you, you know, can you think of, you know, and then maybe alternate with that. But what's been bothering me is people have been seeing their problems, and it's like because they rather be, I guess, like appeased or entertained like you were talking about earlier, they don't want to fix it. You know, they'll deny that there's a problem because they enjoy doing what's killing them. Mm. You know? True. So I, I Stockholm know. Syndrome. Um, or wanting to die seem like you know just not wanting to be here. Yeah, that's that's. Hmm. Which it is stressful. It's this is a stressful it's world. Sad. It's like you know, it's like it, this world could be so much better. You know, the food can be so much better. The air could be, you know what I mean? Not poisoned with chemtrails. You know, the Zika virus. They spraying people that know right. to cause encephalitis. They it, they know that it's gonna swell people's brains. You know, right? It's like this world well, could be so much better. Like, so I think that's, you look at it like what? So go ahead, finish your point. Finish, finish your point. Let's, well, they just they they know that it could be so much better, but it's like. Um, I guess discouraging, so they rather have instant gratification, you know? Like, you know. I think uh, Go ahead, I'm listening. I'm sorry, I keep on cutting you off. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm cutting you off, so one good cut deserves another. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I, I think, I think it's a, I think it's a two-way street. I think, I don't think people really, I think most people are afraid of dying, but I think they have been so conditioned and they so beat down that although they're afraid of dying, they live death every day because they've been so beat down and so colonized. But on the flip side, though, I say that the only way that all of this is going to be rectified is that I mean y'all y'all bear with me on this. Okay. Is that we're gonna to have to destroy the world. Now now let me let me let me clarify that, that uh, qualify that statement. Hmm. Every cycle has phases. Let's just take the four cycles of the year. You've got spring, you've got summer, you have fall. Now, what the, just the word fall, what does it say? You're falling down into something. And winter, fall is the start of a death phase. And then winter is when everything, all the shrubbery has wilted, wiltered off the trees and right. everything looks dead. Now, if we are spiritual people and we have no beginning and have no end. I personally think that along with us striving to have better health, we should be striving for better health so that we can end this. Because we have our spiritual knowledge lets us know that we can't be uh annihilated. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. We're going to have to wipe some stuff off the planet so that we can rebuild and recreate. Because when you, we, we got to understand who's, who's behind all this. We're talking about a bunch of inbred 
insane Nazis, and you can't reason with them. They no. they they don't have the capacity for reason. The only thing that they know, they have a, a very overdeveloped prefrontal cortex, and they they explain this in this series called Fringe on Netflix. They don't have the ability to feel, and I think we maybe sometimes expect them to have the ability to have compassion, to feel, to love. They don't even operate in that realm. So the only answer is this going to have to be, like when they have a forest fire, the most fertile time is when the forest has been burned down to ash because ash is the most fertile substance on, on the planet. And that becomes the fertile uh, substance for regrowing the forest ground, and these people ain't gonna, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna quit pressing because they, 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 they understand that they ain't got no other, they can't go through the doorway, they can't go, and that's why they create their technology because they say if I don't have a soul and I can't walk through the door, then I will create my technology and I will have, I'll be. Uh, I'll have longevity through my technology. Right. But but I still agree with you that we need health because you know why I say we need to have an understanding of health because we are the priesthood and we are the ones who need to have enough health and enough wellness so that we can stay on the path to bring about the book of Revelations to open up the seven seals. And it ain't, and, and I was talking to my wife the other day, and I'm sorry, y'all, I'm going to shut up here in a second. All right. I was talking to my wife the other, the other day, and I said, you know what? When they're killing people off, it's not really that they're killing them outside, they're killing people that are going inside of us. And it's going to end up being, it ain't going to be nothing but just a few, a handful of us. And when you know when you take something and condense it down, like if you got concentrated orange juice in that little can like we used to get when we was kids, a little concentrated orange juice, mm-hmm. and you add water to it, when you get something concentrated, it is in its most powerful state. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to have to keep getting condensed and concentrated, concentrated down to just the priesthood, which is us, the ones who are on the frequency. And when that thing gets down to a certain point, we're going to ignite and we're going to, because I just said earlier, they use us as the model to make the atom bomb. So when we get down to a certain point and these people, Gonna keep going inside of us, inside of us, and it's gonna keep like like a volcano swelling up. It's gonna explode. We're gonna blink our eyes. Then they say Jesus is gonna come like a thief in the night. We're gonna blink our eyes, and we're gonna be into the the next reality. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at it. But for I us, that's, that. in the and that's why we've been dumbed down so that mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Yeah. So that our yeah. power goes that's to this negative. Vibe. Um, the brother, one of the brothers on um, the chat room said that it's called cognitive dissonance. And I said, well, let me look right. that up. And it says the state of having inconsistent thoughts, inconsistent beliefs and attitudes, especially as relating to behavioral decisions and attitude change. So, you know, that's what's going on. And then also, too, in the chat room, um, the family was stating that there is no such thing as death. Actually, in Kemet, um, there is no glyph or hieroglyphic for death, which, you know, with melanin, you know, and then also with the science of Christianity, you have eternal life, which that's the baby version of the perspective. But on the occult or the, um, the, the um, metaphysical aspect of that perspective, you know, energy is created nor is it destroyed. You know, so, you know, it is what it is. You know, we all chose to incarnate back in this reality, you know. So, inshallah, God willing, we can raise the vibration on this planet. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
and and the people who's supposed to get it are gonna get it. Mm-hmm. You know, they gonna get it, cause um, it's uh, the 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 humanity of us, our hearts, because we are we are we are loving people by nature, and we we want to figure out how to get everybody on Noah's ark. <laughs> but you know, on Noah's Ark, there was only two of everything. That's true. We know that's a fictional story, but we got to look at the symbology of it. Right. You know, mm-hmm. only two, two can get on. <laughs> so we got to con- this. You know, we got to keep condensing down. We got to worry. We we got to make sure that those of us on the frequency, we keep our morale lifted up, because really. You know, our people are dependent on us. They, 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 they ain't. The majority of them just ain't, just ain't gonna. They ain't into this. They ain't gonna get into it. You know. God, you said and, Noah. Uh, you said I, Noah's th- Ark, and then um, the goddess in the chat room said Noah was dark. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, mm-hmm. the dark side, the occult science. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm telling no you, doubt. We, are, we adding on in the chat room. Um. Mm-hmm. Somebody wanted to make a comment or a question, and the area code is nine seven three. Your microphone is on. Don't be shy. Area code nine seven three. We'd love to hear from you. Okay. Like they a phone crazy. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> hey, hey, peace. Peace. Oh, peace. <laughs> I didn't know my phone was on mute. I'm sorry, Sam. What's up? <laughs> He's got it. <laughs> peace, Queen Kadira, uh, Dr. Eileen, King Eileen, everybody. It's Tova, Nicola in the chat. Peace. 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 I can't wait to hear the whole show. I'm loving. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't get the brother's name who's who's speaking right now. Um, the reincarnated Anubis was <laughs> talking about death and life and everything. You know, that's so beautiful because um, that that's that's what's right. You know, I was um, you know deep thought in writing about that and the lowest expression of um, a mentality is with. Uh, duality is the lowest form of spirituality. You know what I'm saying? And like that, uh-huh. right, the, the death mongering and that is going on with the collective mental illness is because the fear of death. It's like it's death obsessed and flesh obsessed because they're so scared of death. And on the Kenneth Walls and in the Metanella, like we were prepared to face this. That's what this whole so-called life in these physical bodies was to do to prepare us for that. So. Um, you know, that's, that's a beautiful thing because, you know, sometimes, you know, I have to ground myself and bring myself back to the moment because I see, you know, the future in hindsight and always prepared for, you know, building my Merkaba for the next dimension because not only, like, do you have to, like, get to the fifth if you know what's going on, but you also have to co-create and build it. And we have so much work to do, plus all the cleaning up to do. Oh, it's overwhelming. But um, I have to come back here and, like, come back into, you know, our physical Merkabas and, and do the work down here. But I'm seeing that a lot, like the fear of death. And funeral spells real fun. I think that's kind of funny. Uh-huh. So, you know, um, it's all full sl- circle. you got to laugh till you cry and cry till you laugh. But um, I'm really appreciating all the love and wisdom and knowledge that we're receiving tonight. And, you know, I'm going to, you know, source it out. Peace. But thank you. Thank you for, for listening. And by the way, my name is Jamal. So I'm Peace, gonna... Jamal. Peace to thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everything. And I'm I'm so excited to get um your book, Doctor Aleem. I'm gonna be ordering it tonight. So thank you so much for putting that out there. And um I'll be in touch with y'all. And um peace and love to all the fans. Peace. Peace to you. You know, the sister brought up something about that fear. And if I just want to add it, you know, that fear 
The more you fear something, the more you attract it. You know, she's talking mm-hmm. about, you know, the fear of death and this death cycle. Uh, and you talk about why the media puts out. I, I, I did a video on my YouTube channel to implore people to stop putting up these pictures of people getting shot in the street. And people think they're being revolutionary when they put up, look how they're doing us. But you are adding to the narrative when you keep uh, re uh, showing that same image over and over and over. That's, that's, that's what their goal is, to implant that into your subliminal mind. Right. The death cycle, death cycle. You know, because I got, I got stuff. I've, I've gotten into a habit of printing out articles because what I'm finding now, you'll find something on the internet and they'll come back and black it out a few weeks later. So we were we were blessed and finally got us a little printer. I've been burning up this cartridge printing out stuff. And I'm gonna tell y'all something. European people are dying in mass numbers, and I'm not trying to get on here and I'm not promoting no doggone. You know, no, no radical nothing because I got to say that because we don't know who's listening. I ain't promoting none of that. I'm just telling you the truth. They are dying in rapid numbers. So what they've got to do is use their vehicle, which is the media, to keep putting out the image that, no, you're dying, you're dying, you're dying. You look up they, skin cancer, breast cancer, suicide, Overdosing on pills I got articles on all of it So They know Because they understand occult sciences They need to put out the message To us that you're dying in mass And we need to, they need us to internalize that Oh god We're dying We're dying And then we bring that into reality Mm-hmm Yes, you can't bring it to reality. Yeah, uh, it's like uh, when you do exercises, you know, uh, you want to say, I usually do about 50 reps. Nah, I'm feel tired, but I can't do nothing but about 30 reps. And 30 reps is probably all you can do, you know, because that's mm-hmm. already implanted in, you already implanted that in your head already that, that you can't do the, uh, 50 reps maybe that day particular day, you know, the repetition, exactly. or whatever type of exercise you want to do that day. Exactly. Any and, other, uh, anybody? Yeah, uh, Can y'all tell me, I'm just curious, how does the chat room work? Because when I'm doing the thing, I don't never know how to see a chat room. In order to see the chat room, you will have to go to the particular, um, you have to log into Block Talk Radio and then go to Eileen Bay. And then um, the page will pull up. And uh, what you will see is the chat room down towards the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so these people are on Facebook doing this? Is that how people uh, come in through the, on Facebook? They come oh, no, through this, Twitter, this through old. Facebook, um, through Google Plus, through emails. Oh, man. Because so when I'm doing my show, I don't be knowing. How, I always see people talk about the chat room. I don't even know how to get into a chat room. Yeah, this okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to play around with that. And um gotta get caught up you to the twenty first century. Um, chat room, I'm pretty sure you probably already answered that question. Um give out your information one more time, Brother Jamal. Uh, my for my business, my training business, my website is gymworksmobile.com. dot com. That's G Y M W O R K S Mobile M O B I L E 
dot com. Uh, my YouTube channel is called Gnosis, the Gnosis, and um, that's G N O S I S. You can find me on Facebook, uh, just under Jamal Robinson, and you'll you'll see a picture of my old man. So that that's me when you find that. Um, I have a blog talk show that comes on every Saturday at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's called The Quest Journey into Reality. And uh call in number is 515-605-9375. And uh, oh, I'm sorry, email address if you want to shoot me an email. But the Jamal's The Quest. So check them out whenever you can. That's every Saturday. All right. Um, Brother Jamal, you got any closing statements before we go? Brother L, you got any closing statements? Yes. Um, uh, also, uh, you want to check out also the the martial art Aikido, which also is a good art uh, for like yeah. uh, for spirit spirit wise. Yeah. Yes. Mental wise, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, it's good talking to you, brother. I've learned a lot from you tonight, especially about the English language. Yeah. So I'm gonna look up that book, The Origins of English Language, that you said Abdullah Bay was talking to you about. No doubt. And, I, and I'm amazed well, that brother I appreciate Abdullah. I'm um, tell um, brother Fahim. Um, shoot, they done talk. Um, I don't know how how much over the last um year or so. <laughs> yes. Brother Abdullah, I meant to get that book. Uh, he was yeah. talking about the book, but I always get other books before that. And okay. I said, well, well, I got to hold my notes too. back. His brother said that that's one of the most treasured books in his library. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. You need it. That's why when you mentioned his name, I knew exactly who you were talking about. I talked to him uh, about maybe every two weeks, you know, not as much mm-hmm. as I talked to Ali. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I talked to him, you know, but that's like I say, everybody every mm-hmm. two weeks. See how he's doing. He calls me. See how I'm doing, cause he, uh, my, I'm his what you call a Masonic contact in the St. Louis, Missouri territory, and uh, mm. uh, you know, so we we kind of we got kind of uh, acquainted, kind of close. Mhm. So yeah, so I know what yeah, well, he's talking I, about. Yeah, I heard him. He was on. He was doing a video, and I was like, man, he started breaking down the different words that mean see, like ocular and hand. And, I was like, okay, I got to get this book, <laughs> you know. And just just to repeat, recap for the listeners, it's called The Origins of English Words, a Discursive Dictionary of Indo-European Roots, and it's by Joseph T. Shipley. That's the yeah, book. He, he, yeah, I remember. All right, Joseph yeah. T. Shipley, The Origin of English Words. Make sure y'all get that right. in the library. If you don't have it, go get it. Yeah. Um, brother, again, any closing statements before we get up out of here? Well, I just want to say a, a final thank you to, again, you, Dr. Uh, Eileen, to your, your goddess, uh, Sister Kadira, to you, Brother um, Fahim, and uh, to your listening audience for allowing me to come on and, and, and express myself. I want to thank uh, my listening audience for tuning in. And uh, final words is, man, know thyself. All right. And, shoot, as much information you're going to drop tonight, I know they enjoy it. They love it. And uh, we love y'all listening. So come on back next Wednesday. It's me and Brother Fahim. And the song we're going to leave out with is Trap or Freedom. Yeah, ATD, above the dome, trap of freedom, the family, tradition, heritage, the missing links, spiritual miracles, the awakening, the walking sphinx, the time to eat, food for thought, the meta magician, holy rain water flows off my altar, channel through the seasons, elevate the reasons. What's the purpose of life to the living, death to the conscious? At the end of days, clash of the titans, zombies running rampant, Christ in the pamper, looking for a lamp, 
revving at the church, plugging in the amp, rock of the ages, son of the undead, vampiring for more rage, I bleed red ink on the page, words and truth, no signature, to the blur, from invisible literature, sitting at the dock of the base with Otis, having rituals, turn the lights off, he can get real quick, sir, milk and pot mix, I'm in search for a fix, walking backwards, looking forwards, patiently waiting, don't ignore it, holding two swords like peace signs, ain't that you would. into flight, hawk eyesight, interdimensional terabytes, fuel for the journey, some lay a fuel for the gurney, colored in the book of law, no need for attorney, I turn the page, feel the strip like a doctor coming out the cage, I'm the lion, fed grain, sticks and stones, no pain, a worker's only worth his gain, attempting to keep my inner sane, with lifestyle changes, highs and mountain plains, seven thoughts, Seven faults, no faults, who's to blame? It ain't the same, they take your names, I feel the sun. It ain't no fun if the homie can't have none. I see you run like who's fame like none. It seems frightening, exciting. I go with streaming lightning. I'm the nigga loading at night. Peace.